Shonen series live and die by their villains, but for me, there's one villain who stands far above the rest, and that's Marshall D. Teach, or Blackbeard, also known as the best shonen villain ever. Sadly, it feels like Blackbeard never quite gets the respect he deserves amongst the manga fandom. That is likely because the One Piece fandom in the US has never been as rabid as the Naruto or Bleach fandoms. I've always found that surprising, since One Piece is currently the king of the shonen manga world in terms of overall sales and the heir to Goku's throne left behind by Akira Toriyama. Naruto and Bleach have both ended and faded away, but One Piece has remained a relevant flagship series for over 20 years now. One of the biggest reasons why it never really gained as much otaku acceptance as Bleacher and Naruto in the US is probably due to the art style. The art has always been perceived as cartoony, and the legendary 4Kids dub probably didn't help things much either. Here's how the story goes, we find out by the treasure in the grand line, there's no doubt. The pirate whose eye is on it, he'll sing, I'll be king of the pirates, I'm gonna be king. Your attitude's the pits. Cherry, peach, or apricot? Tell me, does he give you nice doggy biscuits when he wants you to play fetch? And you, all buck, no bite. Woof, woof, woof. So if you're not familiar with One Piece, it's a series about the adventures of Luffy, a young boy who aspires to become the Pirate King. One Piece pirates have very little to do with actual real pirating. There's very little raping or pillaging, and as the series goes on, it becomes even more removed from the real world piracy. Being a pirate in One Piece is less preying on the innocent and more a declaration of freedom to do whatever you want. Luffy expresses this freedom, for the most part, by going to amusement parks and sightseeing. Make no mistake, creator Ichiro Oda is very much a pirate fanboy. When Oda introduces something important, he likes to throw in a little bit of real-world pirate lore in. So when he introduces a character known as Blackbeard, whose real name is Marshall D. Teach, it's an obvious reference to the real-world Blackbeard's birth name of Edward Teach. This is Oda's way of indicating that you should probably pay attention to this guy. In the battle manga, the antagonists are as important, if not more important, than the protagonists. Antagonists are king. Protagonists need to be cool and likable. Sure, they can have disposable villains that they defeat with ease, but for a series to really gain popularity, the antagonist usually has to be ten times cooler than the protagonist. We can do a very simple test of comparing Naruto's basic character design to Zabuza, the first major villain introduced in the series. Which one do you think looks cooler based only on aesthetic design? He must be out of his mind! One against all of us, what's he thinking? <laughs> I think it's pretty easy to tell who's stronger and who'd probably win in a one-on-one -on -one fight. But this makes for a compelling conflict. How the hell does the Little Goggles Kid manage to face off against a professional killer with a sword that's bigger than him? Zabuza is a classic example of a worthwhile shonen antagonist. He's a character that's much cooler than the protagonist and is clearly much more powerful. How will our plucky hero manage to prevail? Most shonen antagonists come in as a cool obstacle with malicious intentions to oppose the hero, but Blackbeard is different. What makes Blackbeard so special and unique is that he shares the exact same values as well as the ultimate goal of becoming the Pirate King, just like Luffy. In fact, when Luffy first crosses paths with Blackbeard, he gives him an encouraging speech about how the age of dreaming pirates will never end. The dreams of pirates will never end! They can laugh at us all they want, because when you aim high, you often come across fights that just aren't worth fighting. Right? <laughs> they both share the same ambition, and their first meeting is even a friendly one. That's the genius of it. While his dream isn't necessarily malicious, the way he intends to achieve it is anything but friendly. Luffy hopes to become the Pirate King by traveling along, making friends, and recruiting them to join his crew so their unique skills can help him overcome more difficult trials later on. Blackbeard believes in recruiting so he can become the Pirate King, but has a completely different way of going about it. Instead of making friends, Blackbeard beats Luffy's brother, Ace, half to death, then he turns him over to the world government, who arranged to have him executed. Then Blackbeard breaks into Impel Down, the world government's maximum security prison. Why does he go there? To finish recruiting members to fill out his crew. 
Luffy uses the power of friendship to convince people to join his crew. Blackbeard breaks into the most hardcore prison and has the most powerful criminals compete in a deathmatch for the right to join up with him. All for the sake of pursuing his dream. Any of this would be enough to put him on the list of the top 10 most badass villains ever, but he's not even finished. After he finishes recruiting, his new crew makes their debut on the world stage during the War of the Best at Marinford, the Marines' headquarters. Blackbeard, along with his crewmates, proceed to finish off Whitebeard, one of the four pirate emperors, and a pirate so strong that it took the entire might of the world government's military just to fend him off. After that, Blackbeard literally smashes down one of the oldest lore traditions established at the very beginning of One Piece. He manages to extract Whitebeard's deus ex machina devil fruit power from his dead corpse wielding it along with his already awesome gravity-based darkness fruit, all while every other character stares at him, wondering, what the hell? Anyone who tries to eat two devil fruits is supposed to die, horribly. This also reveals another level of Oda's brilliance. The power that Blackbeard takes in is the power to create earthquakes, a power he recklessly uses with little fear of the consequences. Oda's genius here is that he's managed to give one of his longest-running villains a power that taps into the core fears of his main audience, namely Japan. All these events happen in the One Piece manga around 2009, two years before the major earthquake and tsunami hit Japan. As if channeling the unconscious fears of his readership, Oda had manifested an antagonist with the power to attack his reader base with something out of their worst national nightmare. All Blackbeard needs to do is to find the nuclear nuclear fruit to turn him into the perfect storm of all of Japan's fears. The real beauty of all this is that it didn't happen overnight. Blackbeard's ascent to becoming one of the biggest players in the One Piece universe is something that Oda's been building for years. Most of the time his presence is something that's been building off screen. Thus far, the payoff has been spectacular. Another thing that has separated Blackbeard from the typical shonen villain is that we've seen his progress literally run parallel along with Luffy's. Blackbeard started out being a no-name, without even having a bounty. He's also had just as many failures and defeats as Luffy during his journey to becoming the Pirate King. That's easily what makes him the most interesting. His growth parallels with Luffy's, as opposed to generally coming into conflict with Luffy. He has mainly stayed on the sidelines, save for a few pivotal moments. At this point, it's become abundantly clear that Oda is setting Blackbeard and his crew to serve as the final challenge for Luffy and the Straw Hat Pirates on their way towards One Piece. In fact, many of the members of his crew are dark versions of the Straw Hats. As the series moves slowly towards its eventual conclusion, years of foreshadowing are building up to the eventual confrontation of the Straw Hat Pirates versus the Blackbeard Pirates. Honestly, I could not be more excited, despite how many detours it takes to get there. That's shonen storytelling at its best. Long-form serialization where every detail builds upon itself and eventually pays off later down the road. So hopefully after all this, you can see why I love Blackbeard so much and get on the Blackbeard hype train as we await his eventual arrival in the post-time jump era of One Piece. Let us be the fire, the first day of night.